Hello everybody, Scott Golden here, Golden Opportunities Coaching. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you who are seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here, we break down social, psychological, and coaching-related topics into a discernible way, and we do that on a daily basis in an audio format, and uh, uh, we try to do that every day. There's over 270 audios for you to check out, hopefully something of value to you here. And we're going to talk today about uh, seven ways to kind of uh, get through or deal with a bad mood. We all have them. Usually they happen when life isn't going the way we planned and, and we feel like we're losing control. And so there's seven ways to kind of uh, get that going. Um, and so the first is get into nature. When you look at something bigger than yourself, like nature, right? The clouds are bigger than you. The sun's bigger than you. Water is bigger than you. Just the, the survival of the birds and, and the, the little bit that they need to survive or a, a blade of grass or a leaf on a tree. All of these things are coexisting without having wants met. Now, that doesn't mean it's wrong to want things, but it's a, it's a deep reminder that the world keeps going regardless of what we want. The world keeps going regardless of how we feel. And sometimes being in... A, a place to remind ourselves of that can help us snap ourselves out of a bad mood, not to mention that nature often gives us the most beauty and, and serenity because if you think about it, everything that has ever existed has a purpose, even you. And when we step into nature, we begin to look at the interconnectedness of purpose. And the next is listen to music, but do so in a varied way. If you're, if you're depressed, if you're sad, if you're angry, listen to music that indulges those moods, but also balance that with the reality of happier music or hopeful music or music that makes you ponder, think, consider. Because when you stay in one emotional state, when you stay in one mental state, you're going to set yourself up to recontinue the same state, which is fine for a season if it's like half an hour, hour, whatever. Give yourself permission to indulge it, which is totally okay. And actually one of the points was just to completely embody that mood. But put a time limit on it. You know, I only want to be upset for the next 30 minutes. And cry it out, punch it out, do whatever you got to do. But when you put the limit on it and you fully embrace it and you use music or other artistic, artistic endeavors, visual art, spoken word, written word, whatever have you, and get it out of you, you've given it an outlet and then you can begin to heal. Understand the reasons behind what you feel, why you feel what you feel. The understanding is just as valuable as what you're feeling because when you can understand it, then you can make alterations when you feel a little better to not have to go through that again or at least so soon. When we don't understand why we feel the way we feel, when we ignore it and we just say this is the way it is, we cut ourselves off from the possibility of positive change. And the possibility of positive change is there at any given moment. It's always there for us. It's always present. Whether we choose to engage with it, whether we choose to use it to our advantage or not, that's on us. But it never isn't available. And so it's important to kind of learn the control and the mechanism of controlling how we feel, how we think, how we respond to the world in a positive and meaningful way. The next is take your control back. Again, it's about time. How much time am I willing to give this bad mood? When I'm when when this show's over, I'm going to get up and do this thing. When this show's over, I'm going to go work out, or I'm going to go exercise, or I'm going to go punch the punching bag as hard as I can, or I'm going to go for a run, or I'm going to do something different. If you don't take control of your mood, your mood will take control of you. And so it's important to realize that when you are active in putting parameters on your moods, you're also allowing yourself to accept that it exists, but it's not the definition of your identity, which is where most people fall into anxiety, depression, and other negative things. It's because their, their emotional state becomes entwined with their identity. The next thing is do things that make you happy, but also that force progress forward. So if you're a gamer, set a goal of, of completing a new level or a new challenge in your game. If you're a writer, sit down and write a chapter on, on a project you're working on. If you're a YouTuber or someone who creates media, then set a goal for writing a script or recording a, a video. If you're more pensive and you like to read, 
set a chapter, set a goal to read a chapter within the next half hour. Set goals that engage in things you enjoy, but also set goals that you that force you to use your time differently. Also understand that all moods are just indicators. A happy, more pleasant mood is an indicator of the need for gratitude. A negative mood is always the invitation for the need for something to change. Your perspective needs to change. Your outlook needs to change. How you see the world needs to change. Um, maybe, maybe what you're looking at needs to change. The people you're surrounding yourself with. Every negative emotion comes from the reality that something in your life isn't working and it's time to address that core issue so you can get more out of your life. So hopefully this is helpful. Keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Till next time, everybody.